This next tool is one of my favorite tools. It's the photo montage tool. Have you ever needed to create a slideshow or some kind of a montage that's got photos that are moving and maybe time to music and so forth? That's what this tool does and it can process 10,000 photos in the blink of an eye. So we're going to look at how to create photo montages and they don't just have to be photo montages but let's not get ahead of ourselves. We'll dig in and see how it works. I've got a piece of music here on the timeline and I want to use this to establish the rhythm of how my photos are going to change or how they're going to move. So I'm going to play the timeline and while it's playing I'm going to click or press the M key for marker to drop markers down in time with the music. You ready? Here we go. And I'm not going to go through the whole song, but here we dropped in 23 markers, so we've got quite a space there. And let's uh, just zoom in a little bit more deeply so we can see what's going on. Okay, so we can see where all these markers are transitioning or taking place. Next, we're going to come up to our montage tool in the Production Assistant timeline. This is going to allow us to go through and add some photos. So we're just going to dig in and grab a bunch of photos at random. We're going to choose open and next let's set up how we want this to take place and we want to randomize the order of the photograph so I'm going to hit randomize and that way they don't feel quite so much like they were shot in sequence. I want to place them at every one marker. I could just tell it to fit to music or fit to a region but in this particular case I want to fit it to the marker since I've taken the trouble to drop them in. Duration, I'm going to fit them to the placement. I could set them to a specific length. Perhaps I want every photograph to last for five seconds uh, or any other variable that I wish to type in there. We could have it be seven seconds or even just a few frames. In this case, I want to fit to placement. Transition length, I don't want any transitions taking place, but if we did, we could again go in and choose some transitions and I like my transitions to be somewhere in the neighborhood of seven frames or we can ignore this command overall, but I want it to be cuts only. I don't want any transitions, so I'm going to leave the apply transitions unchecked. I do want to reduce interlace flicker. This is something that's very important when you're importing stills into any video editing applications. Make sure that we don't have a problem with interlace flicker. We want to crop our pictures to match our project aspect ratio and it all automatically will set to the project or we can specify, in this case, DV widescreen. I'm just going to leave it set to project and now we can choose the movement of those photos. So we can have them move all directions or maybe deep in, slow out or all left or all right. You can choose whatever you'd like them to do here but we're going to choose all directions in this particular case and that's about it. Let's choose OK. Boom, there's our pictures all laid in exactly the way they want them to be. Now these photos were all shot upside down by nature the way that the, the camera was set on the, the mount. These are from a camera helmet so I'm just going to go to the track motion tool and choose flip vertical. Now they're in correct aspect. Let's get rid of this uh, other track here. <laughs> Now the photos seem a little chunky on the timeline. That's because we're importing 12 megapixel stills. 12 megapixel stills in video don't exactly match when it comes to pixel dimensions. So I recommend that before you import a lot of pictures to the timeline that you batch reduce those images to a size not greater than 2000 by 2000 pixels at any point. You can use tools like Photoshop or Irfan View or any number of different tools to batch reduce the size of photographs. Now if you're dealing with standard size photographs, things that have come from the web or some scans you've made yourself, just make sure that the pixel dimensions are not greater than 2000 pixels or 2K in any given direction and that will make your stills behave just like video on the timeline. 
And it's no problem dealing with the 8 megapixel or the 12 megapixel stills or some of the larger stills that come from today's SLR cameras. Just bear in mind that your processor probably can't keep up with it and that means your render time is going to be a little bit slower too. So to optimize your experience, reduce the size of those images before you put them on the timeline. But let's dig into what else you can do here. In this particular case, I want to see what this is going to look like in my shot before I, I render this out. And it's kind of choppy. I don't have good movement. So let's hit Shift B to render this up to RAM. And this will let us see exactly what it's going to look like as it goes through. So we're just rendering this up to RAM in the background. And you can see our motion happening there. Great. That's exactly what I want it to be. But this isn't all that you can do with the photo montage tool. We can do quite a bit more. So let's open up the photo montage tool again. So let's remove all of these photos from our bin. Choose edit. And we're going to remove all of them. So they're no longer there. Choose OK. Now we're going to go in and add some video files. Let's just go to our extreme sports. We're going to grab all uh, 34 files there and choose open. Great. Now we're going to set those up to go to a new track. And we're going to again randomize the order and we're basically leaving everything exactly the way that it was. Except, let's create transitions. Let's make those transitions be four frames in length. Okay, we'll choose. And we don't need to have any pan and scan in there because it's video. Let's slide up and select none. Great. Choose OK. Now we have a video montage on top of our photo montage. Now you might recall as we looked at this video earlier in the DVD, it's all 4x3 media. Notice that Production Assistant has not only brought it in on the markers that we wanted it to come in on, but it's also converted it to widescreen for us because we told it to match our project aspect ratio when we brought the media in. Now here's a couple of other really cool things that you can do when you're using stills and video together. You can use the compositing envelope tool inside of Vegas to create beautiful montages that go back and forth between video and still photographs. So we're going to come up here to our video line and our, mont our montage line. We're going to right click and choose insert envelope and choose composite level. And there we've got a nice composite level and by holding the shift key down we can turn that into a pencil tool and just draw some changes that go through here. And we'll just have some fun drawing some some rough changes here. There we go. So now we've got some changes or some, some opacity changes happening in our video. We can see our stills coming up through the bottom there. And again, it's starting to choke up because of the fact that we've got these great big 12 megapixel stills going on there. So let's just render a piece of this up to RAM by using that Shift B function. There we go, and let's have a look at it. And so by blending the two things together, we can get a much more in-depth or a much fatter look. Another way you can use this creatively if you want is create two lines of exactly the same photographs or similar photographs grouped in a different order and just simply change the opacity as it goes through the upper track. It'll give your photos a lot more movement and a, and a lot more feel. So you can get very, very creative with this tool. The photo montage tool is one of my favorite tools because we can move those pictures in any direction that we want or all of the different directions. We can add or not add transitions. We can do all kinds of things with still pictures or video together. So play around with this tool. I think that you'll find this tool alone becomes one of your favorite go-to tools when you need something right away.